In the last chapter, we worked a little bit with matrices and operations on matrices. We figured out how to do Gaussian elimination, Gauss-Jordan. We set up a couple of applications. Well, what do we do when there's more than one matrix? What properties work, what properties don't? So again, I'm not going to read through everything that's in the book, but let's take a look at how to add some matrices. First of all, if you're going to add matrices, they have to be of the same size. So remember, we designated size as row by column. So it's got to have the same number of rows and columns in order to add them together. So matrices, we use capital letters to name them. So let's say I had a matrix of 2, 3, 5, 4, negative 1, 0. And matrix B is the matrix negative 3, 0, 4, 2, 1, 8. Yeah, I mean, I could put in, I could put fractions and decimals and all, but why? All right, what are the sizes? Two rows, three columns. So each one is a two by three matrix. They're the same size. We can add them together. So matrix A plus B, I'm just going to take corresponding parts and add them together, meaning that there's a two that's up here in row one, column one. There's a negative three that's up here in row one, column one, and I'm going to combine them together. Two plus negative three is negative one. Then I'm going to look at the three that's over here in row one, column two. I'm going to look at the zero in row one, column two, add them together, and I get three. Right next to it, five plus four is nine. And now I'm done with the first row. Go down to the second row. Four over here, two over here, four plus two is six. Negative one plus one is zero. Zero plus eight is eight. So that is the sum of matrix A plus B. What if I wanted to do some scalar multiplication? Right, a scalar is just a constant. So scalar multiplication, let's say I want to take matrix A and multiply it by negative 3. What that means is take every entry in matrix A and just multiply it by negative 3. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. And 0 times negative 3 is 0. All right, so if it was an order for a factory or something and I wanted to double my order or triple my order, then I could multiply the whole thing by 2. And then I could do fun things like take 2 times matrix A plus 3 times matrix B. And again, I would end up with a matrix that's 2 by 3 because I'm adding matrices that are the same size. That's the only way to do it. All right, so adding matrices is a relatively easy task. Multiplying matrices gets a little bit more involved. So when I multiply a matrix, First of all, if I'm multiplying two matrices A times B, then the rule is that the number of columns in matrix A has to equal the number of rows in matrix B. Otherwise, I can't multiply the two of them together. So if matrix A is an M by N matrix and matrix B is an N by P matrix, we're okay, row by column. So here's the columns in A, here's the rows in B. Those two numbers are the same. It's okay to multiply them. By the way, the answer matrix then will be these two numbers on the outside. So if I multiply them together, I'll get matrix AB. That's an M by P matrix. All right, so as long as those two numbers in the middle are okay, then we can multiply them. The answer is in a dimension of whatever the outside is. So let's try one. Suppose I have matrix A as 2, 3, 5, negative 1. And matrix B is 7, 3, negative 5, 2. So I start with matrix A and look at the first row of matrix A, and then I look at the first column of matrix B. So let's write this all out the first time. Row 1 is going to be 2, 3. Column 1 is going to be 7, negative 5. So I take 2 times 7 plus 3 times negative 5. So row 1, column 1, then row 1 by column 2, and so forth. So 2 times 7, 3 times negative 5, that gives me 14 minus 15, negative 1. So if I just multiplied row 1 by column 1, then in the answer matrix, that 1 goes in the spot for negative one, actually, goes in the spot for row one, column one. All right, then I keep going. Then my next step is to do 
row one by column two. So row one is still two, three, except now column two is three, two. So I do two times three plus three times two, six plus six is 12. So 12 goes in the top right corner there, row one, column two. All right, when I'm done, then I have no more columns in matrix B. Then I move on to the second row of matrix A. And now you realize why you need the same number of rows in one as columns in the other. Because if you had more columns in A, you wouldn't have anything to multiply those numbers by in B. You'd have like an extra piece over here that had nothing to match with down the bottom. All right, so row two by column one. All right, row two is five, negative one. Column one is seven, five. So I do five times seven, the first times the first, plus the second times the second. So 35 minus five is 30. So that goes in row two, column one of my answer matrix. And then what goes down the bottom is row two by column two. So row two, I lost a negative sign. Sorry about that. That should be a seven and a negative five, which would give me not 30, but 40. All right, so this answer down here then is 40. And then I've got a negative, I got a five negative one, and then the second column is three, two. And so now I can do 5 times 3 plus negative 1 times 2. 15 minus 2 is 13. That 13 goes in the bottom corner here. So this thing here is the product AB. And yeah, all right, I was multiplying a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2, and I got a 2 by 2 for an answer. Easy enough. All right, what might, what might you use these matrices for? I'm just going to give you a quick sketch of some idea of where you might use these things. So suppose you were selling sweatshirts, and we're gonna to try to keep our sweatshirt example relatively small. So I can buy them in two different places. Remember at one time we used to be able to go to stores, like actual stores? So I can buy my sweatshirts at a store, or I can buy them online. And because I'm trying to keep things simple, I only have three sizes, small, medium, and large. And I can fill in these numbers with how many sweatshirts I sold at the store, how many I sold online of each size. And then I'm going to take a matrix that has three rows, but one column. This thing here is going to be my cost matrix. So maybe it costs 15 bucks for a small, it costs 20 bucks for a medium shirt, and it costs 25 bucks for a large. So this first matrix has three, has two rows and three columns. This one has three rows and one column. So it's possible to multiply these two matrices together. What will my answer be? My answer will be a matrix that has two rows and one column, right? The inside numbers are the same, so that's okay. It's those outside numbers that will give me two rows and one column. What is it? Well, what will come out is one number that tells me how much I sold at the store and another that tells me how much I sold online. So multiplying it in this way, I would take the number of small shirts times the cost of a small, medium shirts times medium cost, large shirts times large uh, cost, all for the store. Whatever number that is, that will go here for how much I sold at the store. Then I'm gonna do it for the second row for online, and I'll come up with a number online. So that's one example where you might use these matrices. All right. What about multiplying larger matrices? That's where things get a little funky. And you just have to kind of keep track of what you're doing. So I'm going to try to fit it in here, although I'm used to writing this on a gigantic board. Eh, we don't have that this semester. So suppose I had a couple of three by three matrices. And I wouldn't ask you to multiply by hand anything that's bigger than a three by three. If you were going to do that, I'd have you throw it on a calculator. So I've got one, four, three. 5, 7, negative 1, 
two, eight, six. And for matrix B, I don't know. Let's do negative five, eight, one, four, two, six, five, eight, negative three. Well, first of all, it's okay to multiply the two of them, right? They're both three by threes. So the number of columns in one equals the number of rows in the other. It's okay. There's going to be nine sets of these um, calculations. So the first thing I'll do is row one by column one. When I do that, here, I'm going to write the first ones out, and then after a while, I'm going to not write everything out. So one, four, three is the first row. Negative five, four, five is the first column. So I'm going to multiply one times negative five plus four times four plus three times five. So do you see how I'm matching it up? one times negative five, and then I got four times four, and then the remainings. When I do that, I'm going to get a number, right? 15 minus five is 10. 10 plus 16 is 26. So 26 is what I get from doing row one by column one. Now let's do row one by column two. So I get one times eight plus four times two plus three times eight, right? See if you can start doing this a little bit in your head. One times eight, four times two, three times eight. So eight and eight is 16, 16 and 24 is 40. All right, let's do row one by column three. So now I'm on the last column of that second matrix. One times one is one, four times six is 24, three times negative three is negative nine. So 24 minus 9 is 15, plus 1 is 16. In my answer matrix now, I've created the first row, right? Row 1, column 1 is a 26. Next one is a 40. The next one is a 16. Okay. Now, let's do row 2 by column 1. So now I've got 5 times negative 5, negative 25. 7 times 4 is 28. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. So 28 minus 25 is 3. 3 minus 5, negative 2. So that goes in row 2, column 1 of my answer matrix. All right, row 2 by column 2 is going to be 5 times 8, which is 40. 7 times 2, which is 14, minus 8. So 46. And row 2 by column 3 is going to be 5 times 1, which is 5. So now I'm on that third column here. 5 times 1 is 5. 7 times 6 is 42. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So I get 50. And now work your way through that last one. Right, row three by column one is going to give you negative 10. Eight times four is 32. Six times five is 30. All right, so 52. All right, row three by column two is going to be 16. Eight times two is also 16. Okay, and six times eight is 48. Uh oh, big numbers coming here. Uh, 80. And now row three by column three. All right, so two times one is two. Eight times six is 48. And then six times negative three, negative 18. So that'll give me a 32. All right, so there's my answer matrix. This is A times B. All right, how do you get good at this? You practice. At the beginning, you're going to write a lot of things out, row one, column one, row one, column two, and all that. After a while, you'll eyeball it a little bit better. You can also draw circles around here. So you could say, like, I'm going to do row one by column one. But, of course, that only works so far, and then eventually you have to start erasing things. Otherwise, you end up with a big mess. All right, let's look at a system a little bit differently now. So suppose I've got this system with three unknowns and two equations. So I've got x sub 1 plus 3x sub 2 minus 2x sub 3 is equal to 0. 
and 2x sub 1 minus 4x sub 2 plus x sub 3 is equal to 0. So I can write a coefficient matrix. Right? I can write 1, 3, negative 2, 2, negative 4, 1. And I can write a variable matrix, x1, x2, x3. And then what are the numbers on the other side of the equal sign? They also form a matrix, 0, 0. So what are the dimensions? This first one here has two rows and three columns. This next one has three rows and one column. Inside numbers are the same, OK. So the outside then is a 2 by 1. All right, so if I go back and multiply 1 times x sub 1 plus 3 times x sub 2 minus 2 times x sub 3 is 0, it works. Great. What can I do with this? Well, I can combine these into an augmented matrix and try to solve for the variables. Let's see if that works. Let's take 1, 3, negative 2, 0, 2, negative 4, 1, 0. And let's see if I can row reduce this a little bit. So I could take negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2. Answer goes in row 2. So multiply the top row by negative 2. So I get negative 2, negative 6, positive 4, and 0. All right, so on the top, I still got 1, 3, negative 2, 0. Now I add the blue numbers to the bottom row, and I get 0, negative 10, 5, and 0. All right. I can then try to go back and create some zeros on the top. Maybe I want to get rid of that 3 that's up in the top, but it would be nice if I did this. Let's take 1, 3, negative 2, 0. Divide that row on the bottom by negative 5. So I get 2, negative 1, 0, like that. All right, let's see if I can get rid of the 3 that's up here. So I'm going to try taking 2 times row 1 minus 3 times row 2, put my answer in row 1. So 2 times row 1 gives me 2, 6, negative 4, 0. Negative 3 times row 3 gives me 0. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3, and then 0. So now if I add them together, I get 2, 0, negative 1, 0. OK, so that's going to be in my new row 1. 2, 0, negative 1, 0. The bottom row is 0, 2, negative 1, 0. All right, let's create 1s in the pivot positions. This is easy, because I just have to divide through by a 2. So I get 1, 0, negative half 0, and 0, 1, negative 1 half 0. Fantastic. What does all this mean? Well, it looks like I have a 2 by 2 matrix that's 1s and zeros on the left side. But what am I going to do now with those other matrices, or with those other entries? Well, I might start by letting x sub 3 be t, right? That seems like not a terrible choice here. Let's see how that works. Let x sub 3 be t. Well, now go to your first row. Your first row is that x sub 1 minus 1 half x sub 3, but we just figured out x sub 3 was t, that equals 0. So it must mean that x sub 1 is 1 half t. All right, how about the second row? The second row says x2 minus 1 half x3, which we know is t, is equal to 0, so x2 equals 1 half t. So I can line up my solution to look like this. I can say x1, x2, x3, right, like so, equals on the other side, we said x1 was a half t, x2 is also a half t, 
and x3 was t. But really, I don't even need those t's in there. I could pull those t's on the outside and leave it as a half, a half one, where t is any real number. Or, if you don't really like dealing with fractions, why not write it like this? 1, 1, 2. Because all I'm doing is I'm finding some relationship between the numbers. So all this is saying is that the first two variables have the same value, and the third one is double that value. You could even multiply everything through by negatives, right? You could say my solution is negative 2, negative 2, negative 4, right? So I'm just coming up with a set of parameters that explains how those things are related to each other. All right? And that's the end of this section.